In this video, we're going to talk about how we could determine if a particular treatment was randomly assigned, given that we're not dealing in experimental conditions. And we're going to continue using the example which we've already used, which is, is there an effect of infrastructure spending to lower the level of violence within a conflict area? And let's say we didn't know whether states were randomly assigned or whether they were assigned with some sort of pre-existing criteria to receive infrastructure spending. How might we then determine if the level of infrastructure spending which the state received was in fact randomly assigned? Well, one of the methods we could use is we could look at the level of certain variables for which di is equal to zero and compare that with the mean level of those variables for which di is equal to one. In other words, we're comparing those which didn't receive infrastructure spending with those that did. So what variables are we going to compare across? Well, intuition suggests that we should look at the values or the mean values of variables which we think are important determinants of violence because then if there is a difference between these two groups, then the sort of simple means comparison might actually reflect the fact that there are differences in these underlying variables rather than the actual effect of the treatment. So what are the sort of variables we might look at? Well, some of the variables we might look at might be the level of income within those certain regions. We might also look at the level of unemployment, for example, both which have been shown in the past to be relatively important determinants of whether or not a certain region actually has a higher level of civil conflict. We might also look at the level of ethnic fractionalization across the two different groups. And because, again, this has been shown in some studies to be a determinant of the level of civil conflict within an area. Well, what might we do? Well, we might find that the level of income in those states or districts which didn't receive infrastructure spending might be 100, whereas for those that did, it might only be 80. And then what we could do is we could then do some sort of simple t-test of means to compare whether these two means or these two sample means imply that there is actually some sort of difference between the two groups in terms of the mean level of income. And if we found a p-value for that, particular t-test which was less than 0.05 then we might conclude at the sort of 95% confidence level that there was in fact a difference in income between the two regions and it might actually be reflecting that or the difference in violence might actually be reflecting the fact that there is actually a difference of income rather than the fact that there is actually a treatment effect and then we might look at unemployment and we might find that let's say the level of unemployment is 100 on average in those states which didn't receive infrastructure spending and it might be 101 in those that did. And for that case, it's probably the case that we would find that P is greater than 0.05, especially if we're not dealing in a particularly large sample size. So on that basis, on the basis of just looking at unemployment, we might actually conclude that the variables were randomly assigned. But the trouble is, seeing as we've already sort of concluded from income that they probably weren't randomly assigned, then, or, and if we think that income is an important determinant of violence, then we might actually think that comparing the means uh, or the mean level of violence between the two regions might actually not be a good thing to do. And obviously we can just continue this for the number of variables which we're sort of interested in and just compare to see if there is actually any difference between um, the control and the regions which were tested or treated rather. And what we could further do is we could actually do a regression of V on the various variables in question um, and that, again, would help us determine whether these variables were, in fact, important in determining the level of violence within a region. Um, and we'd probably include the variable di as part of this regression as well, just so that we are sure that we're not omitting an important variable. So what do we conclude? Well, we conclude that we can actually evaluate whether a treatment was randomly assigned by just looking at the values of certain variables in the treatment group versus the control group. And we know that if di isn't randomly assigned, then the problem is, is that the simple difference of means is likely to be bias. So actually the difference of means doesn't reflect the effect of the treatment. It more reflects the fact that there are some underlying variables which are different between the two different groups. So what can we do in the circumstance when there are differences between the two groups in terms of these underlying variables? What can we do then in terms of determining whether something is causally affecting something else. That's what I'm going to talk about in the next few videos.